Abstinence, which signifies abstaining from food, finds its first mention in the Bible in Genesis 2.16, 17 when God told Adam and Eve not to eat from a specific tree. The purpose of this mandate was to remind humans of their dependence on the Creator. Laws relating to fasting and abstinence were established to help individuals fulfill their moral obligations. This is SD Case and Courses, and welcome to today's lesson, where we will be discussing the history and significance of abstinence in Christianity. In the Old Testament, fasting and abstinence were practiced on various occasions, including the Day of Atonement, when Jews abstained from food and labor. They also observed abstinence on specific days to commemorate events such as the capture of Jerusalem, the burning of the temple, and the murder of Gedolius. The practice of abstinence was intended to train the Israelites in the pursuit of spiritual cleanliness. Notable biblical figures such as David, Esther, Judith, Daniel, and Judas Maccabeus engaged in fasting and abstinence as a form of penance. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ spent 40 days fasting in the desert as an example to his followers. Throughout the Latin Church, the law of abstinence prohibits the consumption of meat on certain days, such as Fridays during Lent. This practice is intended to help Christians fulfill their obligation to do penance and honor the memory of Christ's suffering and death. Fridays have been recognized as days of abstinence since the early days of Christianity to commemorate Christ's crucifixion. Saturdays were added to the list by some churches to extend the observance of abstinence, and various reasons have been proposed for this, including the mourning of Christ's death or St. Peter's preparation for confronting Simon Magus. Lent, a period of 40 days of fasting and abstinence before Easter, has undergone several changes in duration and practices throughout history. It initially served as a time of preparation for baptism or the absolution of penitence. Today, the Lenten season obliges Christians to abstain from meat and other animal products on certain days as a means of practicing self-discipline and penance. Ember days, which mark the beginning of each of the four seasons, were also observed as days of fasting and abstinence in the past, but that practice has ceased. These included the days following the first Sunday of Lent, Pentecost, the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, and the third Sunday in Advent. The Advent season, which serves as a preparation for Christmas, was established by the Roman Church as a period of fasting and abstinence. Similarly, Vigils on the eaves of significant festivals were observed with fasting and abstinence, as the clergy and laity would gather in churches to pray and chant the divine office. This practice was observed on the vigils of Christmas, the Assumption, and the Apostles, as well as on other important days such as Pentecost, St. John the Baptist, St. Lawrence, and All Saints. Rogation days, which occur on the Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday preceding the Ascension, were introduced by Bishop Mamertus of Vienne sometime before 474. He prescribed fasting and abstinence on these days, and the practice was eventually extended to the entire Frankish Gaul and later to Rome. In conclusion, the practice of abstinence is deeply rooted in the history of Christianity and serves as a reminder of humanity's dependence on the Creator. It also allows Christians to fulfill their moral obligations and engage in acts of penance and self-discipline. Abstinence continues to be an integral part of various Christian observances, including Lent, Ember Days, Advent, and Rogation Days, helping believers to strengthen their faith and deepen their spiritual connection. And that is the history and significance of abstinence in Christianity in a nutshell. Thanks for learning with us, and until next time, may God bless you forever.